Well, you turned away from my Hawkeye series review video due to the spoiler notice? <laughs> well, this video is for you then. I re-edited the two spoiler-heavy reviews into one spoiler-free standalone review. Hi there, it's Micha. I hope you like this approach. If so, I might do it this way more often going forward. Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, is spending time in New York with his kids. This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. With a plan to have peaceful and relaxing family time, home for Christmas, soon thereafter. But as this would make for a boring Marvel show, I think, of course, some problems arise. One of his greatest fans, Kate Bishop, who witnessed Clint's heroics as a kid while New York was attacked in the original Avengers movie, has since become an achieved martial artist and maybe the world's best archer. Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. Are you one of those people? At least in her own words and mind. Kate has to deal with her mother's new lover and soon-to-be husband, who may or may not have just killed his rich uncle for the inheritance. Following him to an underground auction, which is attacked by gangsters from the tracksuit mafia looking for a watch, Kate comes into possession of Clint's old Ronin costume, the get-up he wore when the snap had killed his entire family, at a time so dark that he turned into a violent and murderous vigilante. Not knowing the outfit's history, she wears it to protect the people at the auction. Unsurprisingly, Barton's stint as Ronan created many enemies who are now starting to hunt down Kate, thinking she is the original Ronan who returned to the city. The tracksuit mafia is one of those enemies. When I wore this suit, I made a whole lot of enemies. In costume, she enters the mansion of the Duquesne family, where she finds the body of his uncle killed with a sword. And Jack, coincidentally, is a master swordsman. Fleeing the crime scene, Kate is cornered by the tracksuit mafia. Just as she seems to lose the fight, Hawkeye drops in. You're Hawkeye! Who the hell are you? Kate takes Clint to her home to talk, just as the tracksuit mafia, knowing her name, is burning down her apartment. After the firefighters are done, the Ronan costume is missing. Determined to get his outfit back for whatever reason, Clint sends his kids home and follows the trace of a close to a LARP sword fighting event. To get it back, Clint has to socialize with a group of first responders who spend their private time LARPing, live action role playing, while Kate procured a new hideout for the both of them. As the tracksuit mafia knows Kate's identity, Barton lets himself get captured. Probably should have bought more guys. Oh, good. It did. Trying to convince them that Kate has nothing to do with Ronan, which is spoiled when Kate falls from the rafters which lands them both tied up in their captor's grip and with their fate in the open. I like the kickoff, nicely setting the tone, which makes you expect a threat level Hawkeye can handle on his own. It fittingly has a similar feeling like the Netflix Marvel shows, which always told their story more on a street level, though Hawkeye feels a little bit more lighthearted than those other shows. Some nice action here and there, but mostly character development and exposition which I do appreciate in these Marvel shows, especially around characters we are familiar with. So we get reacquainted with Clint while sitting in a Broadway musical about Captain America called Rogers the Musical, where the fight in New York was recreated. He obviously and understandably is still haunted by Natasha's death, a wound scratched by the musical's metaphorical finger. We also see that he now has to wear a hearing aid. The second episode shows a quick collection of clips in which he gets hurt a lot in different situations, often accompanied by explosions, which is supposed to explain the need, though no specific incident is given as the main factor. Easter egg. In the comics there is a major storyline around him deafening himself to avoid the mind control of one supervillain. And a few moments later his hearing aid is introduced to basically bring it all back to normal. More storylines includes his aid until Franklin Richards, son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman from the Fantastic Four, restored his hearing by warping reality. The show starts with a flashback to 2012's attack at New York, in which Kate loses her father. She witnesses Hawkeye fighting the aliens, which inspires her to train to be a protector, just like he is. This scene really drove home the point that we often forget. 
Hawkeye might not be much if compared to the Hulk, Thor or any superhero with real powers, but this is exactly what makes him one of the strongest of them all, because he is a hero even though he is not blessed with powers. He is just a person who has to fight even harder to keep pace. His hearing aid now even underlines this fact. Hawkeye was always the most human of the Avengers, because he is only human. Same is true for our new hero, Kate Bishop. The recurring scenes where the two of them have to take a break for being beaten up, moan about their injuries and putting frozen beans on their bruises are not only funny, but also humbling, as they have to deal with the fact of not being superpowered. We certainly get our butt kicked all over this show. Something we never got to see in the Avengers movies, where Hawkeye and Black Widow had to do that on their own time, just not on screen. This is an ongoing topic in this show, where many characters are strong and perfectly trained, but none of them is actually more than that. Everyone can be a hero, even without superhuman powers or high-tech equipment. Just with proper training, dedication and resilience. I enjoyed the fact that all that happened was at a smaller scale. Not every Marvel property has to be about preventing a major disaster or the end of a world. After seeing that he also was underused in previous movies, like being under mind control for most of the original Avengers runtime, which didn't help his standing within the MCU. Mommy, mommy, a superhero. Come on, kid. You need it is nice to finally have him front and center in his own show, though he has to share the limelight with another archer. We basically meet Kate on the verge of becoming the hero she trained to be apparently venturing out to help people for the first time. Along the way she also adopts a dog with only one eye, who helped her out a little bit. Easter egg. The dog that Kate takes in is called Lucky the Pizza Dog in the comics. There he also has only one eye when Clint finds him, while carrying the name tag Arrow. He becomes the family dog, but Barton renames him Lucky. The dog regarded himself as being called Pizza Dog though, as is revealed in a comic special. Back to Kate, she also challenges her mother's fiance, Jacques Duquesne, to a fencing match, which she seemingly lets her win. Though she even earned championship titles in this discipline, she feels he is more skilled than her and hides something. Nice dynamic going on here. Easter egg. In the comics, the character Jacques Duquesne is known as Swordsman, a skilled fighter with an arsenal of trick blades up his sleeves similar to Barton's trick arrows. In some storylines, he is fighting with the heroes, while mostly he is fighting on the other side. In this show, he definitely has something to hide. The series also did a great job in humanizing the criminals, giving the tracksuit mafia gang some relatable moments, like connecting with our heroes around relationship issues. Okay, let's get into the rating. As mentioned before, I really like the show for being more about ground or street level heroes reacquainting us with the Netflix shows. We are shown mostly real humans with human problems, having no superpowers. Also, the criminals were more humanized as usual. No one is just evil, there is always more to the story. Which makes story more interesting and relatable. However, it did make the car chase in episode 3 a bit weird, as some of the vans are flipping over several times and a giant him arrow smashes one of the cars. This all moved the non-lethal approach they tried to pursue pretty close to the edge, making things appear a bit uneven. Fortunately, no one died there. Would I add up all my individual ratings, the show would have only gotten 7.5 points. But as a whole, I am rating the show with 8 out of 10 points. Very solid, mostly done things right, though not perfectly. I guess, though we didn't need Marvel shows to have high stakes, I was missing something. Most likely a central villain, as here they've thrown in a bunch for you to take your pick. Regarding easter eggs, I guess we covered most of the stuff in the main part of the video. I only have one further easter egg for you. Right now we expect Kate to return in the Echo series, or maybe in a theatrical outing next time Clint shows up. However, in the comics she also participates in the battle against the Skrull invasion. While she is defeated at first, she and the young Avengers join later in the final fight. As this invasion is part of a storyline called Secret Invasion, which is also the title of the upcoming Marvel show with Samuel Jackson, we might also see her in that one. Maybe joined by more female heroes. One last call out. It is also worth mentioning that this is the first property in the MCU that seems to have made a time jump after the blip. Clint was active as Ronan right before half of the population was brought back. And a newscaster now says he hasn't been seen for years. Two years according to some sources. This would place the action in this show in 2025. 
It will be interesting to see how this fits into the overall timeline. Usually Marvel has no show or movie happening in the future, just to return to the present time, which was around 2023 in everything we saw in Phase 4 so far. Spider-Man No Way Home also doesn't give a clear time when the action takes place, but likely is in the first year after the blip. Seems like no one is really committing to revealing a proper date, so that there are no inconsistencies later on. Not sure if that means that the MCU is struggling with that due to COVID-related shifts in filming schedules, or if this is part of a big reveal, which we can't grasp as of now. All we can do is wait and see how Phase 4 unfolds. On this note, let's end this video. How did you like this series? What is your take on any of the issues we raised? Let us know in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like it and feel free to share it with your friends. And why not subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future video. Make also sure to hit the notification bell to get a heads up whenever a new video is posted. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching.